Hey guys, it's Will from Potato Strong here. I just want to talk a little bit about um, how you can just simplify your approach to, to eating and, and this type of diet. Um, the reason I'm, I'm doing this is, you know, I get a lot of questions and private messages and see what people are posting on various videos, like the comments, and also, you know, various videos that I've done talking about different things. And when I looked at, um, I really looked into metabolism, like how we burn fat and carbs and, and uh, looked at a lot of science and stuff like that. And, you know, you get to a point where you can just go in, in depth forever and never really get anywhere. So what I'm going to talk about is just some things that I think to keep in mind just to simplify your approach to this based on some of the, like I say, some of the emails I got and other, and other things. So essentially there's different things that can work for different people, different foods you can experiment with, but essentially, you know, I'm looking, I, I'm suggesting, um, you know, three meals a day, try to be satiated for about three hours, somewhere in that range, plus or minus. Um, and um, the, the, the meal should be pretty easy. Like I have, a, I have the same breakfast every day, seven days a week. That's my, uh, you know, what I call Willie's Big Bowl. It's just, a, you know, I, I've got the recipe on my website. You can, you know, tweak it to your own liking. But um, I eat that every day. Breakfast is really important. A good size breakfast, nothing small, like just having a banana or a, you know, a yogurt, that's not going to work for me. Um, you might have scenarios where you're doing a workout or something, you don't want to eat too much, but you know, before and after, whatever that works out to be. For me, every day, breakfast, cereal, cold cereal, I grew up with that. I have you know, a healthy, I have oats and stuff like that, so it's uh, not the, the sugary, refined ones that you see in the store. But And then you know, the lunch and the dinner... It's, 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 there's only, like, most people probably, I would assume, based on my, myself, they eat the same batch of meals every week. Um, now you, that might change over time as you, you know, you get bored and there's different things, but during periods of time, I find, like, we always kind of eat the same group of meals. So, I've got all my recipes on the website, but, you know, we'll have the, the lentil shepherd's pie with some corn or broccoli. Um... Like I've got those baked fries and maybe a veggie burger. Not 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 a lot of the veggie burger. Um, potatoes, mashed potatoes with corn. That's like a staple, or some kind of side vegetable. Um, dinner is a lot of salad, and it could be the pasta. Not as much um, as say. Um, we have a variety of different things like the tacos. I've posted those. It's a rice, bean, and corn, and diced tomato type of uh, mixture. Um, soup. So I, Bonnie makes like a cabbage soup. It's got cabbage, potatoes, turnip, carrots, beans, and barley, all sorts of stuff in there. Leftover meals, like for lunch, you could have a leftovers from a previous, like when I bake, um, when I make mashed potatoes, I make, and quartered potatoes or rice, I make a big batch so that I've got leftovers. So one, one person emailed me and asked me, you know, they're really busy, they're in school and they're hanging out with people in various restaurants and cafes. Um, or if you're working and you don't have time, my suggestion is to make a batch I have a big pot. I make a big, huge batch of potatoes. It could be like half a bag, like five pounds or something like that, somewhere in that range. And uh, quarter them up and boil them. I've got a, a video and a recipe for mashed potatoes. So I whip those up and I put up. I have a big plastic, like a Ziploc or one of those plastic containers. You can get three, a three pack of those. They're huge. Put soup in there, mashed potatoes, quartered potatoes, rice. So I've got. It always ready to go, and it helps if you if you ever do get hungry in between meals, you can eat potatoes. Like I used to find, like if I got hungry, I'd eat an apple or something, 
and it wouldn't, you know, obviously it's not that much calorie, that many calories, but it just wouldn't do it for me. It'd make me almost more hungry. Um, so I, I'm driven by hunger quite a bit, and you know, the potatoes work for me. You might have something else that works for you. Um, but my basic point is there's three easy meals that we make. I, I, my recipes are fairly simple. You could do a lot more, you know, gravies could be all sorts of fried mushrooms and onions and garlic and everything, but I just like boom, powder, boom, boom, you know, it's ready to go every day. Um, so basically what I'm trying to say is I got the three meals. I don't snack generally in between. Um, if I do, it's almost like a mental thing. Like you, you think, oh, I have a piece of fruit or, you know, you're not really that hungry. If you are hungry, then take kind of note what you ate and how you need to eat more at that particular meal. Um, and then in the evenings around 8, I might have a grapefruit or an orange or something like that. That's what I'm eating lately. And other times I used to eat a lot of apple. I'd have an apple. Um, th that's kind of the general rule of thumb is the three meals, you know, they're, they're satiating for three hours or more. Try to eat whole foods as much as you can. So I talked about calorie density before. What that basically boils down to is fruits and vegetables, legumes like beans and peas and stuff like that, eaten whole. If you start getting into higher density calorie foods, so that's like flours and even like bread and um, you know certain things, crackers, obviously we don't eat those, but any types of breads and, and uh, flours and those types of things should be, they're on the higher end of the calorie scale, so they're, they should be limited to some extent. Um, if you're trying to lose weight, I'm not, I don't want to tell people like don't eat bread or don't eat you know flour like pasta or don't eat, but, but just to be careful um, and see how you do with that. Um, So part of the complex, some part of the uh, complexity is just all the stuff that's out there, and as far as information goes, cooked and raw, and eating after four o'clock, this type of food, or can you mix this and that? Um, I just think that I don't distinguish really, you know, cook, like say cooked versus raw. I have. I mean, raw, I mean, you could, you know, it's, they say it's okay to freeze and it's okay to, to cook up to 100 and something degrees or whatever. Um, so, you know, I have raw fruit, strawberries, bananas, blueberries, all that stuff. Um, raw vegetables in a salad. One thing that I, I don't hear, sometimes people talk about, like if they're in the fruit area, fruitarians and that is salad. Like I, I've been finding, if you look at Dr. Esselstein, um, he talks about nitrates in the spinach and leafy greens, how it opens up the endothelia, like your arteries, it opens them up. And like if, if somebody has angina and their arteries are restricted, um, they take a, um, they take like, you know, a nitroglycerin patch. And so when you eat, um, leafy greens and certain vegetables, the nitrates eventually turns into, you know, the nitric oxide and, and that'll open up your arteries. Like, I can tell you that, I mean, my blood pressure went down, but there's other things that, um, that I can tell you from experience have had an unbelievable effect um, on me from eating salads. I'm pretty convinced it's the there was periods of time where, you know, I eat a lot of potatoes and, and veggies, but I wouldn't really eat a lot of plants. And then when I watched the Dr. Esselstein, I started pounding down some big, huge bowls of spinach, arugula with raw, you know, there'll be red peppers, green peppers, tomatoes, um, cucumbers. And it's had an, it's had an amazing effect on me. Um, vitality, let's put it that way. Um... So like if you're, you know, if you're eating fruit and everything, I, I would still highly recommend uh, to get in some big, 
you know, some big green, leafy green salads and stuff like that. We just put balsamic vinegar on it. But what I'm trying to say is that um, just keep, just remember that it's really simple. If you just eat whole foods and, and you eat to your satiated and um, basically, like I looked at metabolism and there's glucose, which is, you know, from the carbs, glucose, some, a lot of that food turns in, you know, the, the starch is basically chains of glucose molecules or you could eat fruit and stuff like that. And then there's fructose, fructose. And that's some, that's been basically processed in the liver and, and that can create triglycerides. And, um, if, if, if it's, if the glycogen stores are full, it gets really complicated. And people were saying that, you know, Jeff Novick and that, like based on information that he knows that there's like your body kind of uses 50, 50 between fat and carbs and at a basic level and that'll change if you start exercising or what your dietary habits are so there's there's people that say well when you restricted your calories um, and you start going back to eating more calories you can you can gain fat so that obviously means if you're eating a low fat diet that the carbs are turning to fat because your body metabolism is kind of messed up people that eat high high fat like Atkins or they go into ketosis and your body starts to use ketones as fuel so your body can change and adapt so when I looked at metabolism, and some people will say, well, there's a fat deficit. You need a fat deficit. So that just that doesn't mean like the fat you burn and the fat you eat. There's also some of the carbs that turn to fat. So there's a you know there's a mechanism for that in a few ways as far as the novo lipogenesis. There's the uh, fructose in the liver can get converted to triglycerides. So there's there's mechanisms for your body to create and store fat from carbohydrates as well as the fat that you eat and so with with the combination of the fat you eat and some of the carbs turning to, to fat you know that should that should um, if that's less than the fat that your body's burning then you should be burning fat you know you should lose fat but but you know how do you know how much fat your body's burning and then people get into well I'm so I'm gonna work out on an empty stomach and I'm fasting and it just it just gets so complicated that I look at things like calories in and out, even though that's not 100% accurate, the general idea of amount of calories is going to be accurate. Now, a lot of the carbs that you eat don't necessarily turn to, they're not totally absorbable. There's there's resistant starches, there's, um, you know, some of the carbs don't really have four grams, four calories per gram, which I talked about before. So it gets really, really complicated. So I look at calorie density for the most part as far as how I think of things. And that just means eating lower calorie density foods. So that's fruit, vegetables, legumes get start getting up there, the brain the breads and the grains and that and then uh, you know I don't eat the the oils and nuts have to be so you know you handle certain things with care. You handle the nuts with care. <laughs> that sounds funny. Um you know you you careful about how many nuts you're gonna eat. If you're able to put a little bit of a few nuts and seeds on a salad or, or just, you know, that's great. But you're going to probably have a bag or something, um, you know, a, a container of nuts around somewhere. And, and if you're tempted to eat it all the time, then some of the theory goes out the window. Um, if every once in a while you eat, you know, some bread with soup or, um, you know, you, there's flour products. I think that's okay. I think, you know, you have to be a human being and enjoy some of the food too. If you're going from a meat and dairy diet, um, you know, you, you're cutting out so many things, meat and dairy and eggs and oil. And um, Once in a while you make some muffins or something and there's some whole wheat flour, you make a pizza dough. Like pizza dough, if you look at flour, you know, it's fairly dense in calories. Um, but, uh, you know, eat. it's going to be a lot better than, you know, the vegan pizzas than these cheese filled pizzas with all the oil and if you have a few pieces of pizza and have a big salad and you know have leftover pizza for lunch the next day um, you know I think you'll be fine I don't think you know you should necessarily do it every day but just you know you got to stick to this diet if people go off the diet and go back to meat and dairy then it's a whole failure and if you know if they could have eaten a little bit more pizza or a little more things that they liked and not completely crashed and burned I think there's value in that so to summarize what I'm saying right now is if you're looking out there and you're looking at all these websites and things and recipes, it, so many recipes get complicated with all sorts of ingredients and desserts and things and I just think 
you know, you're, you might eat some different things than I do, but we, you know, like I say, I eat the cereal. Bonnie has uh, like an oatmeal. She cooks the, the cereal, the oats. Um, I have, you know, we just eat the mashed potatoes, a quarter of potatoes with veggies, leftovers, uh, you know, soup. We had shepherd's pie leftover or even made at lunchtime. Um, make a big batch of this stuff and have it in, this, in the fridge. And uh, make sure each meal when you eat it that you're satiated. So if you're, if you're in restaurants and stuff a lot or working and there's a lot of temptations, try to make sure you're full breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's going to help a huge amount. You just don't, you just don't want to eat. Uh, you won't want to snack on these things. Um, yeah, while I'm talking about desserts, there's just one other note that um, I would try to minimize that. Um, it's nice when you go, if you, if you go into vegan, you start finding all these great, amazing things you can make that are vegan, but um, those are generally eaten after the main meals, and I just think it's going to add too many calories. So for the most part, if you can keep it to you know special occasions and try to make your own low-fat vegan desserts, um, but try not to get into a habit of eating these things every day. Um, try to eat three meals that are filling for probably about three hours each, and uh, maybe you know a fruit or something as a snack in the evening or in between lunch and, and dinner. Sometimes if I don't eat enough for lunch or something, I'll um, I'll, eat, I'll go back and have some more potatoes. But I try to get a sense what I'm eating at the time that you know that I've eaten enough. But sometimes, you know, you finish a plate or something and, that, and then you stop and a little ways later you realize that, yeah, I should add some more. So, we, like I say, we've got all the recipes on our website and, you know, you can find your own and different ones and modifications, but try to stick to just simple, simple meals, um, simple recipes. We use onion powder, garlic powder, and stuff like that sometimes and other times, you know, I'll, like in pasta, I'll fry up onions and green pepper and garlic and stuff like that. So it just depends on on the day. And, um, you know, we've been doing this now. It's over six months. And it's I can tell you that the changes have been incredible. And it's it's really a mindset change. Like I've, I've, I've lost weight in the past on different diets, but I've never been this lean before. Um, I feel great as far as energy goes and um, I know in my mind like this is it uh, there's a lot of things we did that were just habitual like you put oil in your frying stuff or you put I was putting sun-dried tomato oil in pasta and buying things that were way higher in fat and eating you know every time I get hungry I'd eat cheese and crackers and I put I'd eat Caesar salad with all sorts of mayonnaise and veggie bacon bits and croutons and everything and it was just just these bad habits so you know I, I don't want to say all everything was based on a desire to eat something fatty or, or junk food but because there's also you know chips and junk food and fast food and stuff like that but a lot of it's just insidious behavioral things that you learn to do over time without even thinking about it so I'm, I'm convinced like once you're aware you and you know that now there's really no need to go back to it and also don't think about it don't think about deprivation like oh i can't eat this or i can't eat that when you if like we suggest going 100 percent into this and and because you can it'll change your taste buds and you'll actually really enjoy eating these foods like we'll get cravings you know i'll get cravings for fruit you know or something like that oh i feel like eating an orange or a grapefruit or um eating mashed potatoes or whatever and um, these meals are are so enjoyable and tasty that they, those are the things that I think about as far as you know a craving or something like that if you do happen to get certain cravings for ice cream or something like that there's the banana ice cream that, that that's great um, there's even a dessert that I made with dates um, almond pulp and some cacao it's like a, a brownie or a, a macaroon type thing, a, a ball. 
and it was so tasty and, and the dates provide that texture um, so I don't really want to be eating too many desserts um, I'm still trying to lose some some uh, fat but I'm getting down pretty good here and um, you know you have to be realistic so you're not always going to eat perfectly as far as you know you might occasionally want to eat a dessert or something if, if you can but really give this a chance um, to work and get your chase buds adjusted and you'll find that these meals you'll just love them and you'll want to eat those 100 percent so yeah keep it simple don't get too confused with all the stuff out there and uh, if you have any questions feel free to let me know on the Facebook page or um, on this YouTube video so Good luck, guys. Hope that helps some people, and we'll talk to you next time.